understand some of the key concepts that is used inside the UiPath Orchestrator. And after this, we'll go into UiPath Orchestrator and we'll work on all of these key terms that is written here, right? And you need to understand these terms clearly because people will be asking when you are in a job, they'll be asking you, can you go and create a machine? So you should understand when he say machine, what he's talking about. He'll go and say that he, please create a folder, please create a package, please create a process, right? So you should understand all of these nine terms. These are pretty useful. Okay. And I'll explain you uh, first, you know, just by, you know, showcasing on the screen uh, through the image. And then I'll go to the UiPath orchestrator and I'll do all of these steps. So you don't need to worry about it. Okay. All right. The let's talk about the first thing, which is machine. Okay. So machine is nothing but an actual machine. Okay. Where the robot will be executing. It could be a VDI. Uh -huh. It could be your personal laptop when you are running from a studio. It could be a VM in cloud like Azure, AWS or Google or Alibaba. It could be anywhere, right? So basically what you need to do, you need to define a machine where that robot can run. So machine represents a actual machine where the robot will be executing. When I say actual, it could be a virtual machine, right? But, yeah, it could be a virtual machine. All I'm trying to say, there exists an entity called machine that could be virtual where the robot will be executing. Okay. Then we have a second concept called folder folders. Okay. And there is a very common question asked in most of the interview. What is the difference between classic folder and modern folder, right? So I'll explain you what is the difference between classic folder and modern folder. But let's before that, let's understand what is folder. So folder is nothing but grouping your robots so that access can be separated between the different teams or it's basically like a logical separation, right? So say, for example, if your UiPath orchestrator is used by, you know, 200 people in your organization, right? So it's not good that I should showcase all our automation to all 200 people, right? Those 200 people could be from different department. They could be from HR, they could be from legal, they could be from IT, they could be from other business area, right? So what I'll do is in that case, I'll create a different folder. I'll create a folder called HR, I'll create a folder called legal. I'll call create a folder called it IT. I call create a folder called, you know, business unit and all the related item, all the related item for that particular department will be clubbed together inside a folder, right? So that we can grant access required access to the person who actually need rather than granting access to everyone. Right? So that's how we differentiate in the UiPath orchestrator and restrict certain functionality to certain user. Okay. All right. So now we have a third item, which is called package. So what is package? So in UiPath studio, what we do, we create a workflow, right? And we publish that from UiPath or UiPath studio that gets published to the UiPath orchestrator. And once you publish the project, it will become a package because UiPath Studio basically bundles your workflow file with the run times, right? Which is required for running your code into a fold into a folder or optionally, you can say it a zip folder called dot nugget or N NPKG, right? It's a nugget package. Okay. Okay. So that up, that is a package. So your project is deployed as a package. Okay. Now using that package, you should be able to create a process. Using that package, you should be able to create a process, right? So say for example, you created a code a project in your studio and you publish that code and it become package, okay. right? And now the same code or same, you know, package can be executed for two different departments, right? by passing different parameter, right? Say for example, uh, the process that we are automating is the invoice process. Okay. So I publish the invoice package. So invoice package is available inside a UiPath orchestrator. 
And now what I'm trying to do here is this invoice package has to be executed for HR team and this invoice package also to be executed for a legal team, right? So from the same package, I should be able to create two different processes, right? Code is same, but they'll be taking different parameters and they are known as process, right? You got this point? Yeah. When the process is running, either on one machine or multiple machine, when a process is running or it is executing, it is known as job, right? Okay. So that is called job. Mm -hmm. And job can be triggered manually or it can be scheduled. Okay. okay. Job can be triggered manually okay. or it can be Man scheduled. Okay. So we should be able to define a trigger which will create a job and it will run it. Right. So job is nothing but an instance of a process in execution. Got it? Got it. Next key term is a library. What is library? Okay. So library is nothing but a reusable component, right? So say for example, in your department, uh, workday is used. Okay. And workday is used for multiple things. It is used for payroll processing. It is used for you know leave balances. It is used for time sheet reconciliation. It is used for you know uh, appraisal, right? So in this scenario, lot of functionalities of workday will be required into each process, right? Correct. Login into workday, log out from the workday, navigating to different system, printing file, and those kind of thing. So what we do is, if we have such application or we have identification where certain things need to be repeated into different set of automations, we will create a library of all those common features so that they can be reused and they can be shared, right? So reusability and sharing is a theme behind creating a library. So you should be able to create a library same way we create a automation. The only difference would be they'll be saved on a different folder tab so that they can be shared across multiple processes, right? Okay. okay. Now, as I talked about the job and I told you that we should be able to trigger a job manually from the UiPath orchestrator or from UiPath assistant or we should be able to schedule it, right? So for scheduling, we can run a bot in a pre-planned manner. Like we want to okay. run this job on every okay. Saturday, 7 p.m. India time. So we should be able to do that. Okay. So that is called schedule, right? Now we have eighth key term, which is called asset. Okay. Asset is usually again a shared variable or you should be also able to store credentials inside the assets. Okay. So say for example, if you want to automate a workday application and workday application, you know, being used in a multiple processes and you want to store the password user ID, which will be required to log in into workday, you can create that as an asset so that nobody would be able to see it. When you store that credential into asset, it is secured and it is encrypted and it is stored inside the orchestrator. And you should be able to use that assets in your automation, but you will not be able to see the password in a plain text. There are ways, there are some hacks available through which you should be able to convert that encrypted password into plain text, but that should not, that should be avoided. But well, that's a security risk, right? It's not good that your developer should know the application password, especially the production password, right? So that's the reason we use assets. So we'll be storing credentials and everything into assets. Okay. And now we have a, another thing which is called queue. So as I told you, queue is nothing but storing multiple type of data on which the robot has to work. The ultimate goal here is to distribute a workload between the different robot, right? So queue is nothing, but it's a placeholder where we can put the data that need to be processed by the bot. 
The only advantage of storing the data into queue is that it takes care of you know concurrency, locking, and lot of other reporting and all other stuff, right? Otherwise, we should be also able to you know create Excel file and we can put our data there. And we can also write a program that basically takes one item from Excel and work on it, right? So that's the same thing. The only thing is that it's giving you ready-made solution for that, right? Other than you writing a code, managing the con concurrency, status, and updation, and all those things. Okay. Okay. All right. So with this, we understand the basic things of UI Path Orchestrator. Okay. So I'll stop my presentation here and I'll go to the UiPath Studio and I help you explain each of these terms that I have talked now.